Eighth grade lesson 9.3 is properties of rotation. So we're still dealing with transformations, um, but this one is rotations. We did translations in 9.1, which was that slide down a straight line. We did reflections in um, lesson 9.2, which was the uh, folded page over, right? Um, the reflection across the X axis or the Y axis. And now we are on lesson 9.3. So these are rotations, and while this is still a fairly easy concept um, compared to the chapter eight we just got through, um, the, for, for my brain, for some reason, rotations um, offer a challenge for me. I just cannot visualize what is happening, but um, but I've I've figured out ways to kind of work around that, and that and it's still okay. It's just not as easy for me as the um, translations and reflections. So let's go ahead and take a look at some important vocabulary. Okay, so a rotation is a transformation that turns a figure around a given point, and that given point is called the center of rotation. That's the point that the rotation, the object that's being rotated, pivots around. And many times you'll hear them say um, that, it, that it will pivot around the origin on your coordinate plane, the point where the two axes meet. Um, and sometimes they'll tell you to rotate it clockwise, and sometimes they'll tell you to rotate it counterclockwise. So a quick review of that. Clockwise is the direction in which the hands on the clock move. And counterclockwise is almost the same as saying not clockwise. So it's the opposite, the opposite direction that the hands on a clock move. Um, they also will say turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise or 180 degrees clockwise. So just to um, kind of point out how that might look on a graph, they're almost always going to be on a coordinate plane. Everything that we look at should be on a coordinate plane for this. And so think of your angles, a 90 degree angle um, would be one of these coordinates, right? Double that and you get 180. So if you are moving from here and they want you to move 90 degrees counterclockwise, that would be going to the next axis. Um, if they want you to move 180 degrees counterclockwise, that would be way over here on the other so opposite side of that uh, x-axis. So it just, that's, that's how you can remember the 90 and 180 degrees of pivot of the rotation is um, knowing that that coordinate plane is 90 degrees here to here, here to here, here to here, and here to here, and double that and you've got 180 degrees. Now, 180 degrees is just going to reverse you over there. 180 degrees counterclockwise is going to be the same as 180 degrees clockwise because you're going that full range um, half circle around. So keep that in mind too. Let's look at how this looks when we um, map these out on a coordinate plane. Okay, so here we have um, triangle ABC as our pre-image. Um, and so we will use the origin, origin here, as the center of rotation. Uh, they want us, and they say, and you may try this, you may go ahead and do this because it may really help you with the maneuvering of this. They say trace triangle ABC onto a piece of paper and then cut it out so that you can match it exactly and then make that move um, physically. That might be really helpful if you struggle with it. If your brain struggles with this, then do that. Cut out the little pieces of paper into the pre-image shape because it's always going to be the same shape and size. We're just rotating it. And then you can rotate it and then trace it. They want us to rotate the triangle 90 degrees counterclockwise, counterclockwise, 90 degrees about the origin. The side of the triangle that lies along the x-axis should now lie along the y-axis. So this is my point that's going to pivot the origin. So it's not moving. That one is not going to move. So I'm going to go over to this other point, and I'm going to turn it 90 degrees, which is one coordinate, uh, counterclockwise this way. And it would put me here. So where it was on the x-axis, now two away, and now put it two away on the y-axis. Okay. Okay, and then... This C point, and this is where my brain starts to battle this, but um, if I am two over and four up over here and I am rotating it 90 degrees, I am altering which axis I'm gonna do. So instead, I'm gonna go two up and four over. I'm reversing it. Two over, four up. Instead, I will do two up and four over and I will mark that point. And then I connect those dots 
and I have A image, um, B image, and C image. And here when they asked us to describe the motion modeled by the rotation, we rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, on this one, um, they have trapezoid T-R-A-P, T-R-A-P, trap for trapezoid. And they want us, first, well, they suggest uh, putting a piece of paper over it, tracing it, and then cutting it out so that you can actually physically um, rotate that the way they want you to do it so you can actually see it happen. And that would be probably very helpful if you did that. Um, they want us to help, uh, they want to rotate the trapezoid 180 degrees counterclockwise. 180 degrees counterclockwise about the origin, meaning the origin is that point of rotation. So um, I would look at this and I start at origin because that's my point or my center of rotation. So I like to start at the origin and I'm looking here. I know that 180 degrees from here means I go um, 90 degrees and then 180 degrees. So it's going to end up in this quadrant and it's going to be the flipped version of that. My brain's going to know that if it's rotated, it's going to be the flipped version of that. So I'm going to start with point R because it's the closest one to the origin. It's easiest for me to visualize or to use. And I will go two on the X, negative two on the Y. So I'm going to do the opposite, negative two on the X, positive two on the Y. There's my R image. And I'm just kind of going to go with through and do opposites all the way through. So if this one is, uh, looks like six on the X and negative two on the Y, then I'm going to go negative six on the X and positive two on the Y and mark it. And that is a image. I will do the same with the other one. Or instead of now, now that I know where line AR or is at here, AR, um, I can just go from there and move upward instead of downward. So one, two, three spots from here for R, from R to T. So one, two, three spots there. Because the, the in a rotation, we don't change any sizes. And then uh, P is over one and then up one, two, three. And that is a T image and P image. And so there's my rotated 180 degrees. So really the pieces I need to know is if it's 90 degrees, where it would end up when depending on which direction. If it's 180 degrees, it doesn't matter if it was clockwise or counterclockwise because counterclockwise 90, 180 and clockwise 90, 180, it's all gonna turn the same way. So just keep that in mind. Okay, here's another example. Um, the figure shows triangle ABC. Graph the image of triangle ABC after a rotation of 90 degrees clockwise. So we're going clockwise this direction by only 90 degrees. So I'm going to take this, um, I'm going to take this point here. I'm going to kind of give myself a little hint here. Take this point here. That's between, directly between B and C. And it is one, two, three up. So I'm going to put over here one, two, three. I'm going to kind of mark that spot because it, that's, those are the little tricks I've learned to help me with these because I know my brain struggles with it. Your brain probably won't. You'll be like, why did you need to do that, Ms. Sanchez? That makes perfect sense. I have to have those things. You'll learn tricks that, for your brain on things that, you sh that confuse you. And this is one that I've learned for mine because this one I can't visualize. So I know that that's going to be the middle of my... Um, of my line here between B and C. Now I will move C to over from that over here, which they have there for me, which is kind of nice. And then B will be up here. And that is a rotation 90 degrees uh, clockwise. So point B is two units to the left of the Y axis. So point B is two unit, uh, sorry, point B is two units to the left of the Y axis here two to the left of the y-axis. So point B image is two units above the x-axis there. And since point C is two units to the right of the y-axis, two units to the right of the y-axis, then 
point C is point C's image will be two units below because it was a 90 degree. So we connect A image, B image, and C image to form the image triangle A, B, C. The image is the image congruent, meaning are they the same size and same shape? Is this triangle the same size and shape as this one? Yeah, it is. We're not changing size and shape. Um, you can tell by the grid lines. The lengths are the same, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, your angles are going to be the same. All of it is the same. It's congruent. It's just facing in a different direction. So that's this lesson. Uh, practice it, and you may find it very, very easy, or you might be like me and, and, and struggle with the, the visualization of it. You can still do it, and you'll find your, yourself able to do it just fine. But the visualization can be a little challenging for those of us who don't see things in our brain the same way. But you'll be successful, I'm pretty confident. Good luck.